Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. Talktainmentradio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Well, good morning and welcome to TopTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, and you are in touch with the compensatory concept. I'm your show host, Mr. Bobby. And this is Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. Uh, again, thank you for listening. And we have several ways that you can get in contact with the show. The first way is to call one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, And then we will try to get you on. And you can ask your questions for Mr. Fuller. The second way you can contact the show is by... Uh, Gmail, 7 Bobby at gmail.com, and then I will make every attempt to get your question on the air so that Mr. Fuller can answer your question. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have a lot of, a lot of people have, uh, already Gmailed me, and I'm going to try and put the questions to Mr. Fuller in the order that they have come. So if I do not get an opportunity to ask your question, Trust me, I will not erase it. I will um, save it until we are on the air again and then have Mr. Fuller address your uh, questions or your concerns. one 932 9766 And also, if you are on the line at the end of the show, this is what we are going to do. If you wait and the show is over, uh, my producer, Galen, will take your name and get the city that you have called from. And then on the next week's show, he will, when you call back in, he will send you first to the line so that we can answer all of your questions. Okay, if you can do that, then we'll be okay. All right, live on the, on the line from Washington, D.C., is uh, Mr. Neely Fuller. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fuller, and how are you this day? Good morning, and I'm still learning. Yes, sir, brother. You, We are still learning, but yes. Uh, as you are learning, could you mention something about your, your book and where we can get it from? And I have a specific reason for asking you that question first off. Go ahead, please. Well, you can get it by going to produce justice, but unfortunately for the next uh, 10 days, uh, it won't be available. Uh, so after the 10 days, that's February the 20th, uh-huh. you can then start ordering from ProduceJustice.com. Okay. That's ProduceJustice.com. Okay. And what will come up on the screen is uh, an advertisement for the textbook workbook for victims of white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Okay. The reason why I ask that question first off, we normally do not do that, but a question came in from uh, Manasseh Wade, and he just says, As greetings, Mr. Bobby. A few weeks ago, Mr. Fuller stated that the compensatory concept is being tampered with by the white supremacists. How is the contemporary concept being tampered with by the white supremacists? Well, they're not supposed to be able to do that, but they can can distort what is written in the books by adding things or taking or subtracting things mm-hmm. and then putting it on the internet and et cetera, et cetera, and uh, not giving the origin of where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, the this is why a part of the compensatory process is you identify even if you're using a a fictitious name, at least 
is supposed to be different from Neely Fuller. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you say who's saying what. And see, that's, uh, so, so people should always be suspicious because they'll do this with thousands of other people. Always be suspicious of someone who is interjecting themselves into information that is being disseminated and uh, information that they're putting in there mm-hmm. and attributing it to uh, the person who is saying whatever he or she is saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, case in point, if it's, if it's something in my book, uh, someone will add something or subtract something yes. and then say that this is what Neely Fuller said. And then also, they will also do something like, this is what John Jones is saying. And John Jones happens to be uh, someone else. But John Jones is duplicating what Neely Fuller is saying and mixing it in with what John Jones is saying right. so that you can't tell which is which. See, so a part of the compensatory codification is that everybody stands by his or her work. Okay. Now, that's whether you're talking about writing or any type of presentation that is made, or if you're talking about a murder case, you want the identity of the person who committed the murder. Okay. Or if a person invents something, you want the identity of the person who did the inventing. Mm -hmm. You know, and distinguish that from someone else. Okay. Uh, You don't want, you you know, if Bill Gates does something, uh, you don't want to confuse his name with uh, someone else like uh, Steve Jobs. Right. Okay. Those are two separate people. They're in the same field, but they are two different people. Okay. And so, you know, everybody stands by his or her work. All righty. All right. All right, well, we hope that answered that question. We have the lines busy, but before we go to the lines, uh, I have another question. This comes from Kenyatta Uhuru, uh, who says, Hello, Mr. Bobby, I'm Kenyatta, and I have a question for Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Maybe you could ask him for me next show. I listen to the show usually on podcasts. I have both books, the greatest books, in my opinion, that I've ever read. Uh, I've lived a lifestyle where pimping and street hustling have always been a means to eat. I'm a little less confused than most when it comes to the global system of racism, white supremacy. I'm 39 years old, and I have never worked. Punched a time clock. I've read and studied and done Years of research, mainly reading, listening, the works of Neely Fuller, Jr., Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, Dr. Benjamin Yakuman, and Ivan Van Van Sertema, Malcolm X, and a host of others. As a child, I went to the Nation of Islam, Sisters Claire's Muhammad School, so I was raised with a different thought process than most people I come in contact with. I'm in no way associated with uh, with any other religious group. And I was always taught do for self. My question is, what do I do to make a dollar or survive without harming other non-white victims of uh, racism, white supremacy, or people, period? I do understand that my activities are non-constructive, but their outcome, but the outcome of the activities helps me to survive. Should I drop out of the system as much as I can, live on the streets, no money, and do my best to respect myself and those I come in contact with while trying to come up with something different? I've done all the black power, Ash, my brother, my sister, uh, meetings I, I could, state to state, looking for a way. How Usually after the meeting, everyone comes in attendance to these meetings, and are too busy for me unless I join their group or here try to, or try to understand and find a job. What can I do to better myself and help other victims of racism, white supremacy? I do what I can down to eating what I consider is healthy and exposing their the other victims of racism, white supremacy to Neely Fuller Jr. What can I do? Thank you, Mr. Bobby and Neely Fuller. Well, that that would come under economics, how you use your time and energy. Mm-hmm. And so the white supremacists, as far as uh, the area of activity that covers also labor, the white supremacists are in charge of all jobs everywhere on the planet, regardless of where you're working. A lot of people will say that I work for myself. I, I don't depend on 
mm-hmm. you know, uh, the white supremacists or anybody else. I have my own way of uh, getting businesses and all like that. But you are still a part of the system, regardless of where you are on the planet, if you are a person who is classified as non-white. If you're black and you're on this planet, you are working in the white supremacist system. There's no way to get around that. So you might as well get it direct. That's the direct answer. Okay. In other words, you can either get money from black people who have gotten their money from the white supremacists, because mm-hmm. the white supremacists control all money. There's no mysterious money on this planet. Mm-hmm. No mysterious diamonds and rubies and pearls. It's all under the jurisdiction of the white supremacists. So any black person who says, well, I don't get my money from the white supremacists. I make my own money, and I, I just deal with black people only exclusively and all like that. But then you raise the question, logically, where do the black people that you get your money from get their money? They get it from the white supremacists. So the answer is you get it directly from the white supremacists if you can. Okay. You just find a, you know, find out a way to get money out of them because that's where the money is. That's where all of it is, not some of it, all of it. That's worth anything. If you run across some black people who are manufacturing their own money, it's usually not worth very much because it has to be validated by the white supremacists anyway. Otherwise, it's not even money. Mm -hmm. So you might as well go to the white supremacists directly. I mean, it's false to think that you are getting something that's mysterious that doesn't come from the white supremacists. It comes from them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they control the people who have it. Once you control a person, you control everything that that person has. And the black people of this planet are totally under the control of the white supremacists, which means anything that the black people of this planet acquire, they oh. get whatever they get from the white supremacists. All righty. Okay, hope that answered your question. Let's go to the phone lines. Line number one, you're on with Neely Fuller, Jr. Go ahead, please. Hello? Line number one. Okay, line number two. Okay, go ahead. Line number two, go ahead. Okay, can I be heard? You can be heard. What is your question okay. for Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr.? Well, first, that, that, that first question was great. The answer was great. Uh, hello, Mr. Bobby hello. and Mr. Fuller. Uh, I have two questions. My first question is, would you uh, speak on how drug addiction is or may be related to racism, white supremacy? Uh, also... Are Jews, Arabs, and Europeans just a bunch of white people having a disagreement? Okay, uh, Mr. Fuller, you care to answer that question? Well, the first question, drugs. Uh, All harmful substances are under the control of the white supremacists, just like everything else is under their control. That's widely distributed. So, therefore... If black people, like in Godfather 1, the movie Godfather 1, where the people were around the table and they were talking about whether or not they were going to bring in the drugs and all like that, who was going to have it, they were talking about they would have it among the dark people, the coloreds, because they're animals anyway, let them lose their souls. So that was a 1972 movie, a fictional movie, but it's based on fact because... The white supremacists say, well, these black people are talking about being independent and talking about uh, bettering their condition and all like that. That's not going to happen on our watch. We have a system of white supremacy that means they are not supposed to be about anything. So how do we keep them that way without just gunning them down in the streets every day? Well, we'll just keep them drugged up. And if it's going to be any gunning down, we will give them the guns to back it up when they're dealing the drugs, and then to kill each other. And that just fits our pattern perfectly. So, yes, the white supremacists are in charge of all of the drugs that are distributed among the non-white people mm-hmm. of this planet. Okay, and the second question? And the second question is about uh, the Arabs, he says. Uh, are they white? Well, they're white if they're white. Uh, years ago, I looked in a magazine, I think it was Look Magazine, that, that's a long ago uh, a magazine that mm-hmm. disappeared a long time ago, but I think it was Look Magazine, uh, either Look or Collier's, I don't remember exactly which one it was. Anyhow, 
I saw the statement in there in an article, uh, or rather the question, what is an Arab? And if the question was addressed to a professor in Cairo, Egypt, the University of Cairo at that time, if I recall correctly. And he said, an Arab is anybody who speaks Arabic. And I thought that was an interesting answer. I never mm-hmm. even thought of it like that. An Arab is anybody who speaks Arabic. Now, this is a professor at the University of Cairo, which is in Egypt. And that allegedly is a statement, or rather a question that was raised to this professor, and that was his answer. Wow. So I just say, well, that's the answer that I'm stuck with, Mm -hmm. because I don't know what an Arab is. I mean, you know, an Arab knows what an Arab is, but I presume, I guess, I guess that this person might have been an Arab, or he would know something about Arabia or Arabs, a person who is teaching in a college in Egypt might know what an Arab is. Mm-hmm. And that was a statement. So I'm, I have taken that statement. I say that's as far as I know. Now, what color is the person? That's a different ball game altogether. Okay? What color is anybody? What color is a Christian? What color is a Jew? What color is a Muslim? What color is a Hindu? What color is a Confucianist? You have to look at the person. Right. Okay. That's it. I mean, and that's the best that I can do. Okay. You look at the person, and the person is either white or non-white. All right. Right. All right. Well, thank you for your call, caller. Thank you very much. Okay. You're listening to the Compensatory Concept, heard exclusively on TalkTeamAtRadio.com. Our main man is on the line, Mr. Nilly Fuller from Washington, D.C., and if you have any questions or comments... You can certainly call by calling one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six, or you can Gmail me at seven Mister Bobby at gmail dot com, and I will try to get uh, your question on as quickly as I can. Uh, we do have a, I guess you could say it's a comment from the Black National Party (BNP). It says, uh, "Mister Bobby, Mister Fuller, would you like to come to London with a road show? You you want to go to London, Mister Fuller?" Well, I would like to go to a lot of places, <laughs> a straight answer, but the truth is I can't go anywhere now. I stopped going anywhere to make talks in uh-huh. 2007. Okay. All righty. Well, anyway, um, they, they, want us to, <laughs> they want us to go uh, some places here. Okay, um, let's see. I think we're going to go to uh, Brother Jamal Smith. Um, he uh, gmailed a question that says, um, Hello. As it as it's understood that Mr. Fuller states that it's inaccurate to call ourselves or refer to ourselves as human beings, and it has been found for the word person or the plural, which is people in particular, these words are 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 also defined as human beings. Would it also be correct? to not use any word such as those just mentioned or any other we've learned about. Thank you. I say that we are persons and or we are beings. We, we exist, and we, we can call ourselves persons. That would be accurate. We can call ourselves beings because we're in a state of being. Uh, but human beings, that's inaccurate. Based on what? Based on the truth. A person who is a human being is a humane person. And what is a humane person? A person that practices justice. Well, it's not possible to practice justice in a system of white supremacy. And that's the only government that we have on the planet. Mm -hmm. The government of white supremacy. So therefore, no one is qualified to call themselves truthfully a human being because you cannot practice justice in the system of white supremacy. White wow. supremacy and justice cannot exist on the same planet at the same time. Why? Because the system of white supremacy is about non-justice, and they have completely taken over. So this is not a just world. So we are not qualified to be humane. This is why everybody is treating each other the way everybody is treating each mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. You can't treat it. You can't you cannot treat people the way that they ought to be treated. 
in this system. In this system. It's not going to happen. Okay. All righty. Next question came up on the Gmail from John Rashad. Hello, Mr. Bobby. Hello, Mr. Fuller. My name is Johnny, and I tune into the show weekly from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, I faintly remember Mr. Fuller mentioning having attended a class on the on the law. Did Mr. Fuller attend law school is the first question. Then it says, my final question is the actor Morgan Freeman caused a stir when he was interviewed on 60 Minutes on the subject of racism. Mr. Freeman told the interviewer that the way to end racism and white supremacy was to stop talking about race. I find this sort of tactic to be dangerous and fruitless, especially coming from a celebrated black person with a rare media forum for their ideas. Could Mr. Fuller answer uh, these questions on the uh, next live show? Regards and keeping, you keep dropping bombs, Mr. Fuller. We need nearly fuller doc, we need a nearly fuller documentary. That's from John Richard in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Okay, Mr. Fuller. Okay, what was that first question? Uh, wait a minute, go back to it. It says, uh, uh, I faintly remember Mr. Fuller mentioning having attended a class on the law. Did Mr. Fuller attend law school? No. I, I have not form, attended what they call a law school. I attended a law enforcement school uh, back in 1981, uh, just for a very, very, very short period. And what I learned in that law school, of course, uh, they were teaching police tactics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. is basically the how you use the Constitution, because you can't support and defend the Constitution without using it. See, that, that I don't think people look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going to support and defend the Constitution, it doesn't mean that you go and find a document called the Constitution and then stand there with a gun and don't let anybody close to it. Mm -hmm. That's not supporting and defending the Constitution. That might be (laughs) one way of doing it, but that's not the way that I think it's intended to be used. Yes. Uh, Just stand before it with a gun and say, nobody comes close to this Constitution, I'll shoot them. So how do you support and defend the Constitution, logically speaking? By using it. If you're not using it, you're not supporting it and defending it. Okay. That is my interpretation. Right. So, therefore, I came to the conclusion that, hey, you use it. Now, you use what parts? The parts that will work for you. Because it's designed to help the individual, particularly what they call the amendments. And so I went straight to the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment, which I say, you know, a third good marshal, the attorney. Yes. Uh, and a, a justice, uh, he used it a lot. Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. And that's about due process and equal protection of the law. Mm-hmm. And I recommend that everybody uses that. When you okay. start talking about law, go straight to the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments because that will cover most things before okay. you branch out into the other ones. Okay. And uh, so that's my recommendation. Okay. What about his uh, thought on Mr. Morgan Freeman? Mr. Morgan Freeman uh, had said, I understand uh, what he said was that if the way to help to solve the race problem is to stop talking about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that might work because I have to take that position. I'll tell you why. And the reason is, logically speaking, and according to the evidence, no one has solved the race problem. So I have it in my textbooks. Everybody's suggestions may be valid. I have a bunch of them myself. And I recommend that everybody talks about it. Or you talk about justice. And if you're talking about justice, you're going to be talking about the race problem. There's no way to get around talking about the race problem if you're talking about justice. Because you're going to run smack into the race problem if you talk about justice. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the race problem is the biggest impediment to the production of justice. So if you, if anybody anywhere who's talking about, well, I want justice for everybody. I want the whole world to be dominated by justice, justice rolling down like a mighty stream and whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anybody who mentions that, they're going to find themselves entangled in the race problem uh-huh. automatically, okay. right out of the gate. So uh, all roads lead to the race.
race problem anyway. So I don't see how, you know, unless somebody can show me how you can get around talking about race. Yes, sir. If you talk about anything at all. Okay. All righty. Let's go to the phone lines. Go ahead. You are on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Are we having a problem with line number one? Let's see. Hello? Okay, go ahead. You're on. You're on. Oh, is that, can I be heard? Yeah, you're on. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Fuller, um, what do you say to white people who think counter-racism is black supremacy or reverse racism? Oh, well, you ask questions, because all problems are solved by questions and answers. So a white person makes a statement, you just ask questions about the statement that he or she made. If a white person says that... Uh, black people are racist, I guess that's what they would be implied, then you ask a question, how, where, when? Uh, when did a black person become a racist? I mean, a prisoner of war became the warden of the prison? When did that happen? Because you can't be both. Mm -hmm. You can't be subject to white supremacy and then be a white supremacist and, and you know... <laughs> And if you're black, you can't be a white supremacist because, first of all, you're not qualified because you're not white. So how did you become a racist? You're a prisoner. And you can't be the prisoner and the warden at the same time. That's impossible. Wow. Okay. Did you have another question there, caller? Um, no, that was my only question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. All right. Well, thank or you. Did I answer the question? Did, did caller did he did he answer the question for you? Oh, is he gone? Okay, he's gone. Well, you know, I mean, Mister Fuller, you you make good sense. I mean, think think about it logically. If you're a warden of a prison, how could you be a prisoner of that same prison? It's impossible. That's I mean, what I'm saying, yeah, you're going to be either or. You right, can't be both. Right. Now you might be a trustee, but a trustee still comes under the warden. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to be, you can't be a prisoner of war and be uh, the commandant of the death camp at the same time. It just doesn't compute. Mm -hmm. Now, a person might say, yeah, but you want to be. That's a whole different ball game. I mean, sure, you might want to be a lot of things, all right? But wanting to be and being is two different things altogether. I might want to be, you know, King David. I mean, you know, but <laughs> hey, uh, what am I? Mm -hmm. That's the question. <laughs> Not wannabes. Lots of wannabes. Everybody wants to be something. Mm. Okay, you are listening to the com the compensatory concept here with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on radio dot com. That's radio the way it should be heard. Call us at one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six or Gmail me at seven Mr. Bobby at Gmail dot com and we'll get your questions on. We'll have more of the show and more questions coming up next. TalkTainmentRadio.com is the premier internet radio platform offering 40 plus talk radio style programs professionally produced, optimized for online distribution, featuring Columbus, Ohio on air personalities. TalkTainmentRadio.com offers listeners diverse programming options covering topics such as arts and culture, love, life and relationships, technology, religion, paranormal activities, local and national politics, women's issues, alongside health and wellness. Listeners can access their favorite TalkTainmentRadio.com programs free of cost through the website. Download the TTR app to your cell phone and you can take us wherever you go. We have programs on demand to fit your schedule through our podcast. The address is TalkTainmentRadio.com. We can give you a new heart. We can help you walk again. We can perform brain surgery. We can treat a sore throat. We can bring life into the world. We can work so many miracles, but the one thing we cannot do is read your mind. When you communicate with your doctor, when you ask us more questions, you reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake. Tens of thousands of lives are lost every year due to medical mistakes. The healthcare community is working on it, but you can help. Please, open up. Ask more questions. 
What are the side effects? When should I expect my test results? Will this medication interact with my other prescriptions? We can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the Ad Council. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. I encourage you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks, the Ad Council, and TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Goodwill is a global social services enterprise and the leading nonprofit provider of job training programs and career services in the United States and Canada. To pay for its program, Goodwill sells donated clothes and other household items in more than 2,700 stores and online at shopgoodwill.com. Goodwill uses the revenue earned from these sales to fund job training, employment placement services, and other community programs. The goal of the campaign is to increase goods donations to Goodwill, inspire an emotional connection to the Goodwill brand, and to elevate preference for Goodwill will supporting minority education i'm sean booker damn it from the melting pot i'm here to tell you that as the mother of a high school senior i know due to financial circumstances many of america's deserving minority students do not have access to a college education since 1944 the united negro college fund has sought to provide one since 1972 the beginning of this campaign uncf has helped more than 300,000 talented students earn a college degree i'm sean booker damn it give a helping hand the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461, 202 202- Four eight four five four six one. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Go ahead, make my day. You got the power. Alrighty, welcome back. Welcome back to TopTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, and that is radio the way it should be heard. This is Mr. Bobby, the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with my favorite guest, (laughs) and also he's also host, Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and if you would like to get in contact with him to ask a question or two, make it brief, you can do so by calling 1-877-932-9766, and I'll try to get your question on. And also, if you can't do that, you can also Gmail the show at 7 Mr. Bobby at gmail.com. And if I have time, I will read your question. And if I don't have time, I will save your question until next week and then I'll read it then. Also, if you happen to be online when the show comes to its conclusion, what I will do, and this was a suggestion by my producer Galen, is simply this. Stay on the line and he will, Galen will take your name and the city that you're calling from so that we can get your question on the show for the next week, okay? This is what we're trying to do, and I think that is a very, very good suggestion that he made, and I'm giving him his props for that because I did not think of that. But So that one's very good. Okay, before we go to the line, Mr. Fuller, one more time, could you speak to your book about it, where we can get it, and, again, that question that came up in the beginning of the show about um, some possible tampering or something going on. Just explain to the people what's going on so that everybody will be clear on that. Well, briefly, all people need to do is just remember, think about the source of whatever you're reading. And if you're not reading anything, if you're reading something and 
just look and see if you're reading a newspaper or you're reading any kind of article. Look down at the bottom or look at the top and see who wrote the article and uh, try to identify who the person is because the white supremacists are now interjecting themselves in the things that black people, non-white people, all over the world are writing or saying or presenting on the Internet and whatnot, and they are mixing it up with some of the things that they are doing mm -hmm. that will serve their purposes. They are doing it very subtly. So if everybody identifies him or herself as, you know, and 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 also uh, you can presumably find out if a person's name is is uh, Lewis Jones or whatever or, or Emma Smith, uh, well, you can probably find out whether Miss Smith or Mr. Jones is white or non-white uh, by, first of all, them giving some type of name, mm -hmm. even if the name is what you might call a pen name or a pseudonym. That's okay if a person wants, people can call themselves by whatever they want to call themselves, but at least be able to identify yes. the person so that you can distinguish between one person and another. And that you, if Neely Fuller is saying something, you know Neely Fuller says this. Now, if somebody else says something, then you say, well, now, uh, Henry uh, Thornton says this. Mm -hmm. and Henry Thornton is white. And he's saying this about what Neely Fuller said. This is okay, too. You know, but identify yourself by some type of handle. Otherwise, you got what? The one thing that the white Supremes has always wants, and that's confusion. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. confusion is what is killing black people. So the name of your book, the name of your book and where we can get it from? The name of the book is a textbook for vic workbook for victims of white supremacy. That's the uh, simple title. The long title is the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. But if you go to producejustice.com, you can get the book. But right now it won't be available again until the 20th of February or thereafter. Okay. Right. Okay, and I'm glad that you pointed that out uh, because I remember even, and this is just an uh, add-on, um, one of the things that I took in when I was going to college in journalism, one of the things they made us do, and if, and if you notice on this program, we always try to speak from a referential standpoint unless we give our opinions. Uh, they made sure that if we quoted somebody, they wanted to know where we got the quote, what the situation was, who said it, when did they say it, and so on? To, we had to give credit to it to make your work credible. If you did not do that, you could get in. You could you could literally get in trouble for saying something that somebody else did not say or or uh, thereabout. So you had to be very specific about information when you do that. So on this show, particularly me, when I'm giving out something, I always try to make sure that I give you references where you can go and look the information up yourself unless I state it, it's just my opinion. But even in that, I still try to give where I derive my opinions from. That's very important. So when Mr. F I, I'm, I'm assuming that somebody or some groups or something maybe have tried to interject something that Mr. Fuller has said and he did not say uh, using some of his books. This is why you go to producejustice.com and get the get the um, – uh, the book there, and I think you'll eliminate most, if not all, those problems. Okay, uh, before we read this, let's go to the line, the phone lines. Go ahead. You're on with Mr. Nilly Fuller, Jr. Go ahead. What is your question? Uh, my question is, I'm calling from Chicago. My question is uh, the term called gatekeepers. From my understanding, uh, I was taught that the gatekeepers are the ministers, the politicians, the dignitaries, the educational the people that's educated. No, I want to... Uh, if nearly uh, Fuller have uh, a definition for that. Okay, gatekeepers, Mr. Fuller? No, I don't have a definition for it because I don't oh. use the term. Okay. So the procedure, according to compensatory logic, counter-racist logic, is that whomever uses whatever term is being used should be the person to define that term. That's a part of codification. Whomever uses a term. If I ever use the term gatekeeper, I'm supposed to be able to tell you in detail what a gatekeeper is, what a gatekeeper does, and what a gatekeeper is not, and what a gatekeeper doesn't do. 
And if I'm using a term, but I don't use the term. So okay. the people who use that term should explain it in depth so that it doesn't cause what? Confusion. Confusion. <laughs> you have another question there, caller? Uh, yeah, an- another question is to, um, in a system of white supremacy, uh, I notice when I have co- conversations of, among uh, blacks, I'm black myself, uh, they don't believe that it, it does exist. It like nearly full often say they believe racism is something that you run into it uh, once in a while or maybe an incident with a cop or some or like somewhere in Utah or somewhere. But I notice a lot of people don't believe it exists. How can I convince them that it does exist? White you supremacy. Don't. That's the answer. Okay. Uh, yes, you don't try to convince a person that racism exists. If they raise questions about does it exist or doesn't it, then you give your opinion, your opinion, based on your experiences and based on what you think. That's what the United Independent Factor is about. I never try to prove to anybody that racism exists. I just let the person talk, you know, which I should do and tell whatever their problems are. Okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. But logically speaking, uh, Mr. Fuller, and, and thank you for the call, caller, why would you Why would you not, I mean, what is the reason why you don't try to convince somebody uh, if they tell you that racism doesn't exist? Because I, uh, racism is a problem. So I'm not trying to give people problems that they don't have. So if a person says that racism doesn't exist, they're saying that, well, you know, I'm not having a problem. That's basically what they're saying. So okay. then you let the person talk and talk about whatever they perceive to be, because most people do have some kind of problem. Mm-hmm. So I have found from experience that black people, when they start talking, many black people have talked to me and say racism is, you know, they don't think about that. that that's not a problem with them. I mean, they have other problems. Mm-hmm. Then I say, oh, you have other problems. Okay. Problems other than racism, and they will say yes. Now, I don't hear that. Want to hear that's racist garbage that you're talking about? That's not my problem. Other people might have that problem. I don't have that problem. And then I'll say, Oh, well, do you have any problems? Mm-hmm. And when that person, every time when that person starts talking about problems that he or she has, and that person is black, it leads right to the race issue. Okay. Oh. Anyway. Even though they will say, I would, and I would interject right then and there. Mm-hmm. I would say, well, wait a minute. Why did you have that problem on your job? And they say, well, you know, uh, they got a whole lot of Southerners in there and whatnot. I say, wait a minute, what are you saying? See, and that's the way the conversation usually will go. Yes, sir. What do you mean, Southerners? You know, <laughs> they have a lot of Southerners on your job. What is you know, a direction yeah. has to do with anything. Yeah, what does that you know? mean? <laughs> yeah, you know, explain it to me. You know, <laughs> then they'll start saying and start using some of those names, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. that I don't even use. I mean, calling people names and all like that. And Ku Kluxes and this, and you know. And, yes, sir. And I say, I thought you didn't say you had a race problem. I thought you just told me that. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, that, that'll definitely do it. <laughs> See, all you have to do is go into the question mode. It'll mm-hmm. take you right to the race problem every time. Every time. All righty. You are listening to the compensatory concept here and heard exclusively on com. That's radio the way it should be heard with Mr. Nelly Fuller, Jr. And if you would like to get in contact with the show, you can do so by calling one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six or... You could uh, Gmail the show at 7 Bobby at gmail.com, and I will try to uh, get the question answered. If not this week, next week, we do have one in the hole, one question in the hole. But right now, we're going to go to the phone lines. Go ahead. You are on with Mr. Neely Fuller. What is your question? May I be heard? You may be heard. Awesome. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, morning, Mr. Fuller and Mr. Bobby. Already? Um, my question is, um, well, the white supremacists, they brag and showcase and write about them their practice of racism, white supremacy, and we see it in the books that, a lot of the books that are out here, the movies that we see, and we experience it in everyday life. So my question is, how do non-white people, especially you, Mr. Fuller, stay optimistic about um, 
replacing white supremacy with justice. And even with you at the beginning of the show, you said that, you know, your book is being tampered with and, you know, you're with that even being an issue. How do or do you see any progress so far with the counter racist effort? Okay, good question. Well, I don't see any progress with the counter racist effort because the way I measure progress is that it's all over. I don't go by yardage like on a football field. I don't say we, we, we you know, we made a first down. Uh, I say, is it over? It ain't over till it's over. That's the way I look at it. Lights out in the stadium. Everybody's <laughs> gone. It's over. <laughs> yes, that's the way that I measure it. Now, other people can choose to measure it any way they want to. They can measure it by, well, we got X number of jobs for black people this year. I mean, you know, we did better than last year. Or the rate of homicides among young black people on South Side Chicago is down this year. I don't measure it by that. That's just the way that I choose not to measure it. I choose to measure it. Is the race problem solved? If it's not solved, we haven't made any progress at all. That's the way I choose to look at it. Mm -hmm. So that, that does what? In my mind, it sets my sights higher. Yes, sir. It means I got to do everything from scratch. It means, it's, it, you know, I got to pay attention to all details. I can't take not five minutes of breather. I mean, this war is full scale. That's the way I look, choose to look at it. Mm -hmm. And I, I choose to look at it that way, logically, because I think you can get more done that way. Hmm. If I start looking at how well I did over last year or 15 years ago or 30 years ago, I'll start breathing and taking a little rest, say, well, we're doing a little better. We no longer have the signs up on the train, and you have to switch railroad cars, and you have to go to the back of the bus. So that makes me feel a little better. So then I get lax. Yes. I don't want to get lax. Yes. I want to look at it as not how far we have come. I want to look at it as we haven't come anywhere. Mm -hmm. We haven't come anywhere. We need to be where we should have been from day one. That's where we need to be right this minute. So we are way behind in everything. Hmm. And I think that if every black person looks at it on the planet, we'll get another burst of energy. All righty. Uh, did you have another question, caller, before we go quickly? Yes, the other question I had was, how do you stay optimistic? Okay, th for hope. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah, she said, how, how do you stay, how, do you, how does Neely Fuller stay optimistic? That's a good question. By keeping on the assignment. I call it in capital letters, the assignment. All right. I, I look at it like, what else am I supposed to be doing? Because I was once asked, someone told me at a meeting once, uh, don't talk to that fellow over there, he's from the Justice Department. And it was a black fellow, a light-skinned black fellow. Mm -hmm. I say, don't talk to him, you know. So I said, that's exactly who I want to talk to. So I went over and started talking to him, and he asked me, why are you doing what you're doing? I said, what else do I have to do in life that makes sense? Hmm. And he started laughing, and we both had a fine time. Okay. I mean, you know, exchanging views All right. about the production of justice. All right. Well, that gets you off. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's see. Wait a minute. No, uh, question here. This is from John Adams in, uh, the ATL, Hot Atlanta. He says, um, Mr. Fuller, what are some suggestions for remaining energized to work against racism? Well, I think you just answered that. He said, especially, he said, I especially have problems with non-white victims in the workplace who are not involved in any measurable efforts against racism. I often have to use the word no, uh, no contact clause from the code to prevent any conflict. Um, that's what John says. What do you, how do you respond to that, Mr. Fuller? Sure, that goes with the territory. See, one has to understand that that's, that's, that's just normal. That's normal. That's business as usual. You take that all in stride. Everybody on the job is not going to like you. You go in with that. I mean, if anybody, you know, kind of bends your way or, or kind of wants to cooperate with you or anything like that, I mean, you you just take that as a plus. Yes. But you should never go among black people expecting black people to help you fight racism. Mm -hmm. 
black people are not trained that way. The hmm. white supremacists did the training. None of us are trained that way. Yes. I mean, actually, I'm trained that way, but I have to break training. So I shouldn't get angry with other black people because they are not interested and all like that. Mm-hmm. I just take that as normal, this condition normal. Hmm. And see, and then then you start codifying everything that you do and say. Okay, and that's how you that that's that's what the books are about. That's what the concept is okay. about. Okay, <laughs> so the word no. Okay, uh, let's see. Harry McKinley uh, has written in to the Gmail account, and he says this. Uh, the caller earlier asked Mr. Fuller, "Is Mr. Fuller going to be part of a documentary?" Because then I think he. Should. Uh, I think more people should know about him and his legacy and what he's given the black community in terms of information and knowledge. So I'd follow up on up with what the earlier brother asked and ask the same question that didn't get answered. OK, apparently he didn't answer. It. And then he says this. My next question is, I had somebody ask me a few days ago, how how will I just changing the words or codifying words will end white supremacy. Uh, And I'm not going to lie. I was at a standstill. I couldn't answer him, and I've read the book. It's been a while, and maybe I need to read it again. But my question is, how long will it take to end the system of white supremacy if we work at it regularly by using different words? Uh, Will it take five, ten or a thousand years? What is the answer, Mister Fuller? The answer is the answer is I don't know, because it's unplowed ground. It's never been done. So it's just like saying, "How long will it take to get to the moon?" You can set target dates and all like that, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get there. You got to work out the details. So since it's never been done, no one has ever overcome the system of white supremacy since it began. I mean, mm-hmm. all of the scholars and whatnot, I mean, who have come and gone and whatnot, no mm-hmm. one has actually done it. So it's unplowed ground. But I'm saying since the white supremacists use words as the glue that holds most of what they do together in all of the areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, since they use words if you untangle the words by codifying them so that they have a counter-racist flavor, mm-hmm. then you are taking the glue out, out from between the bricks that hold the system of white supremacy together. Okay. That's the logical process. All right. In other words, you can take the same words that they use because the antidote for the poison of racism is built right into the poison itself. So you can take the same words and and unscramble them, Mm -hmm. and then they have a counter-racist effect. That's the way it goes. Okay. That's what I do. That's what you would do. And that's what the textbook for victims of racism will help you do. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, And to go back to his earlier statement, he says about a documentary. So let me just put it like this. If um, CNN or 60 Minutes um, or or MSNBC, Al Sharpton, or somebody... I wanted to do a documentary on you on and, and on the subject of racism, white supremacy. Would you be opposed to that? And I think that answer Harry McKinley's question. I am not in favor of that at all. That's why I wrote the United Independent Code System concept, and that is the personality cult, the, the cult of personality. I mean, everybody's looking for, you know, a, a leader in the form of a person. Mm-hmm. The United Independent Compensatory Code is about following a concept. Concepts preceded people. There was a concept of the universe before people were conceived or people were created, according to all the documents and according to logic itself. Yes. There was something before people, because if people suddenly appeared, and there were no apples and oranges and all what, you know, something for people to eat and all like that. <laughs> Why? That, that's doing it backwards. <laughs> that, that exactly makes sense. You yes. are exactly so correct. I'm trying to get people to tap into the concepts of the universe. One and one is two. That came before people. So you want to tap into things that came before people themselves. Mm-hmm. And then you will have all of the guidance that you will need 
that people can use because people use things that are already here. That's true. You know what? Simply put, if you're going to build a house, you better have a foundation before you put the house on top of it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. See, so, so all you do is just all of the laws of the universe, yes. and mathematics and all like that came before people. It had to. And, and therefore, people just tap into they, the same laws that came before them, the laws of the universe, and that means before people. You're not looking for a person to follow. You're looking for the laws that make the person. Right. Okay. And therefore, if the person gets on that wavelength, meaning logic, cause and effect, that's how, how you do it, real simple. I mean, fire will burn, water is weak, uh, wet, all right? You just test these things, you, constructive and non-constructive. Everything that you do is either going to be constructive or non-constructive. That keeps it simple. Keeps it Don't simple. Don't follow a person, follow logic. 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 It's what that person that you are following is following. Okay. All right. And the next logical uh, progression is to go to the phone lines. Okay, uh, caller, you are on with Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Good morning. Good morning. To you and Mr. Neely Fuller, I wanted to ask this question. We listen to a lot of talk shows, <clears throat> and um, we answer questions our opinions and things like that. But why aren't there any concrete solutions to white supremacy when you're dealing with all races? And I'll hang up, and you have a great day. Okay, thank you. Why aren't there any concrete solutions, she asked Mr. Fuller. That's the why I wrote a book called The Compensatory Concept. Compensatory means making up for what's missing. And what's missing is that we don't have solutions. Everybody's talking about how terrible the problem is. We have been trained to talk about that. Oh, we're looking forward to the next shooting so that we can, you know, uh, say that, well, there was a shooting and we are going to protest the shooting. Okay? What about coming up with a solution where there are less shootings or no shooting shootings? What do you do? What do you do before the shooting occurs? So I've tried to suggest to people just the simple things. I mean, it's right in front of us all the time. Well, one thing, the person who is going to shoot you is going to be looking for an opportunity to do so. Try not to give that person that opportunity. That's the logical process. Don't go toward the gun. And if, if the person carrying the gun says, stand where you are, you stand where you are. Because if the person tells you, if you move, I'll kill you. Mm. Well, it's not logical to move if the person just told you what they'll do. And you should assume that the person will do it anyway because they're carrying a gun and they're confronting you in a hostile manner. So that should take care of that. I mean, that's a no-brainer. We don't use the logical things. If I go out of here today and anybody approaches me wearing a gun, and say, stand where you are. Stand where you are. I'm not going to go in the, what do you mean, stand where I am? You can't tell me what to do. The heck, mm -hmm. they can't. Mm -hmm. or yeah. I'm, or in about five minutes or less, I'm going to be doing nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mr. Fuller, a couple of my friends, we were discussing this, and there was some information that was laid on me that I I didn't know this, and maybe you, you did, because you are from the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I understand that there was a uh, the, the so-called Black Wall Street, but what the question was was brought up to me about um, that uh, they talked about the September the 11th attack on the United States on September the 11th. But what was pointed out that in I think September of that year, I wanted I might be incorrect on this uh, before Black Wall Street that they that they had they being racist people in Tulsa had bombed the black businesses in Tulsa. Was that you know anything about that? Yes. I mean, they wiped out the whole section or whatnot, but they can do that. They can do that. They're doing that now all over the world. I mean, if a racist is involved in it, they can wipe out black people anytime they get anytime ready. Anytime they get ready. Wow. So you got to know that in front. Yes. Well, you know what? We'll talk about that more next week. Thank you for listening. Thank you for calling in. This has been TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, the compensatory concept with Neely Fuller on radio the way it should be heard. Guess what? We'll see you in next week. Thank you. 
Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com.